Hi, and welcome to another Strategic Equity Management Portfolio Update. My name is Jeff Hyback, and I'm the Portfolio Manager for Strategic Equity Management. Now, our last few updates have centered more around the stock market and our growth programs, specifically Enhanced Growth Allocator. But recent developments in the bond market have raised concerns about strategic equities income investments. So today I wanted to share some of our thoughts on the current concerns that we've heard from our investors and our advisors, as well as our outlook for the year ahead. Now, late last week, a high profile mutual fund company announced they were halting redemptions from their high yield fund, just one of them, and they were closing it down. And that really sparked concerns about every high yield bond fund. Now, first, I think we need to do a, a key clarification. This fund was a distressed debt um, type fund, which if you're familiar with the nomenclature, it was triple C rated or below. So really what I call it the junkiest of all the junk bonds out there. And it's important to note that when we do invest in high yield bonds at strategic equity, typically our average credit rating has been around a, a double B, maybe even up to a, a triple B, depending on the fund and the environment we're in. So very rarely would we see a fund in our portfolio that would be as distressed as this one, even in a normal functioning market. Now it should also be noted that we are certainly not taking this lightly. We've been concerned for quite some time about the potential liquidity crunch that could be caused in high yield bond market, especially with the impact of the end of quantitative easing, as well as the Federal Reserve getting ready to increase interest rates. So that said, we actually went to completely being out of the high yield bond market um, last Tuesday, just ahead of the announcement on Thursday night of this fund, which then created some, some pretty widespread selling in the high yield bond market overall. Now we've heard from advisors and clients due to this news that they believe the high yields are now going to be a terrible investment for a very long period of time. So in their mind, this also means that income allocator and tax advantage bond are also going to be terrible investments for a, a long period of time. Now, that short-term emotional reaction is, is certainly understandable. It, you know, it's one, when our primary vehicle for returns gets clobbered like that, the first reaction is, oh no, how bad is it going to get? But, you know, I, I would certainly remind everyone to go back to 2008 and during the financial collapse when we had some very large Wall Street banks, some mid-tier banks and a whole lot of small banks that were just completely failing. High yields were crushed back then because there was overall concerns about the entire financial system. So far it appears that these concerns are, are directly related to the basically the short-term functionality of the high yield bond market as far as can somebody sell a bond if, if they want to get out of it and that is vastly different from what we saw in 2008 and we're going to talk a little bit about what we see developing in the high yield market and some of the opportunities that, but those people who are familiar with our services know that following 2008 and some of the early selling in 2009 we had some pretty great opportunities and, and some you know what we call you know generational type returns, something that you don't get very often. And, and so I, I just would caution people from getting too emotional about the short term news in the high yield bond market. Now, whether you look at overall yields, which is the inset on this chart here, or the spread between high yield bonds and treasury bonds, which is the, the larger area chart there, we can see some of the best opportunities since 2011. Looking at the last 20 years, we can see the caution is still warranted as, as that spread could continue to go higher. Now, the best way to look at spread is to just look at it as when the spread goes up, people are concerned about risk. When it goes down, they're not so as, concer as concerned. So when the spread is higher, there's also more opportunities. When spreads are low, the opportunities to make money when you're investing in bonds becomes quite difficult. And what we want to see as far as investing in high yield bonds is, is a strong risk return relationship. So the higher the spreads, the higher the potential return, as well as for us, a, a chance to ride the trend and potentially get out ahead of too high of losses. And that's something that, that as the selling continues, yields will go up, spreads will go up, better opportunities for us.
Now this you know, relationship between spreads and return is certainly true with income allocator and tactical bond. As this chart shows, the relationship between high yield bond spreads and the subsequent 12 month returns for income allocator it has been very closely correlated with, with just a little bit of a lag. You can see strong correlation between how well income allocator did versus where the spreads were at. So if you look at the chart, you could see spreads go up, income allocator returns over the next 12 months tend to go up. As spreads go down, income allocator returns tend to go down. So obviously if you look at this and the direction we've seen spreads going in really since June, it is a great opportunity for income allocator going forward. Now there's obviously other things that come into play. The correlation obviously is not perfect, but for investors in income allocator and tactical bond, the worse things get in the high yield market, the more excited we should become as investors in income allocator and tactical bond. Now one of the biggest criticisms we've heard this year is I would have been better off in money market. Trust me, I feel it too. My money is in this program, it's, in, it's invested in, in all of our programs. And so I feel it just as much as, as our clients do. And it, it's something that, you know, I know we've gone through in the past, but over the short term, it seems like, oh my gosh, the sky is falling. I'm, I'm never gonna make more than the money market. I'm just bleeding away these, these returns. I should just park it and then come back later when things look better. But understanding that the best way to overcome these short-term emotional reactions is the data, I decided to take a look at income allocators results minus a money market return. So really what you can see is if the returns were higher, you would see a, a positive on this chart. If they were below money market, they, you would see a, a, a drop in this chart. So the first thing that I see when I look at this chart is, look, we've been here before. In fact, if you look at 2008 and early 2009, we went through a very long period of time where our clients would certainly have been better off in a money market account. But what really stands out to me, if you look at the chart closely, you can see one important trend. Just before every sizable chunk of returns income allocator had, there was a period where investors would have been better off just sitting in a money market. We can't invest with hindsight, that, that becomes really important, but it tends to be the, the way those spreads work, going back to that last chart. As those spreads compress, it gets hard to make money. Money markets tend to outperform what we're doing. But then they, they reach that breaking point where the spreads can't go any lower just fundamentally and they start to, to go up as people get a little bit more concerned about risk. Then all of a sudden you start to have opportunities. And so after having periods where we, we trail the money market account, then we tend to have outsized returns when you compare it to a money market account. So both of those, you know, if you look at those things and coming into play the spreads and how long we've been um, trailing a money market for, for these last seven or eight months, you know, it, it tells us there are great opportunities ahead for this program. And the worst thing you can do is bail on it prematurely. You know, really the, the biggest mistake investors tend to make when they evaluate their investments is by focusing on what they should have done. Now, historical data is, of course, valuable to e evaluating how different strategies have done in different types of market. It's something we certainly use here. But as, as we also are, are often um, fond of saying, past performance is not a guarantee of future results. But that's all we have to go on. However, when it comes to making future investment decisions, the most important thing we can do is forget about what we've already done. Forget about the decisions we made, whether they were right or wrong, just throw that all out. And anytime you're evaluating an investment, your current portfolio or something you might own um, in the future, it's important to, to look at what it is your overall risk tolerance and what is the objective of that portfolio. You know, and when they talk about risk tolerance, we're talking about both the ability and the willingness to take risk. What we found is the willingness to take risk typically goes up the more the market goes up and the willingness to take risk goes down as the market goes down. The ability is what's important. Are you taking money out? What percentage of your account are you gonna be using for income? What's your other sources of income? What's, what's your living situation like? What's your you know, retirement account look like? On and on and on. It's in, 
important to look at how able is that account to take risk. But once you've determined that, you know, de depending on, on what that is, you know, some things like stock investments might not even be on the table as an option because you don't have the ability to endure the losses. Or on the other side, something like a, a CD might not even be on the table because you need higher returns and you can't afford to just lock yourself into some lower returns. So with all that in, in mind, if, if you're currently invested in strategic equities, income allocator and or tactical bond program, it, to me, it really comes down to just three choices that you can make with your money. The first, let's just lock in a guaranteed return. You're tired of bleeding off money little by little and, and you just want some assurances that, that you're gonna be all right and you're gonna get some sort of return. Now, there's vehicles out there you might get between half to one and a half percent depending on how long you're gonna lock your money up for. Um, different things you know, come into play there and your advisor can, can help you determine that. But, but what's important there is by guaranteeing that return you're locking yourself out to all future upside returns. You're also locking yourself in to returns that are likely gonna be below inflation. So, so it's important to really look at your situation and decide, can I afford to lock myself into that return or do I need to do something and just lock in some, a small percentage of my portfolio in a guaranteed return? That's an option for some people. And, and you know, I'm, I'm not going to look down on you if, if you decide, you know, I just need to put some money into to something, lock up that return and, and then go from there. The second thing you can do is really the complete opposite of that. And it's to seek higher returns by moving into riskier assets. Now, this may also work for some people. We found that many investors were far too conservative in, in their portfolio allocations coming out of the financial collapse which means they needed higher returns they needed things beyond income allocator and tactical bond to provide those market type returns we have a program our, our last couple updates talked about it, enhanced growth it's not perfect it's, it's not always going to make money in up markets and it definitely will lose money um, in a bear market much more so than income allocator and tactical bond but if you need higher returns, that's something you've got to consider. But remember, in investing, anytime you seek higher returns, you also are adding on a lot more risk. But that may fit into your portfolio. The third thing, you know, if you're a client of Income Allocator, is to just sit patiently in Income Allocator and, and Tactical Bond. Now, I, I know many of you have been patient over the last few years. You've watched the market going up at a compounded rate of 18%. You've just been going up three or four percent and you want to know why did I not get those types of returns? I, I totally understand that. But we can't look at where we've been. We got to look at where we're going. So looking at those three choices, let's really break it down. Number one, you could lock in some sort of guaranteed return. Go to cash, go to money market, sit back, wait and see. As we saw from that chart with income allocated returns, those returns come in bunches. If we had an indicator that would tell us when those returns were coming, we would make the program better and we would make more money. Unfortunately, we really don't know until they're happening. We know the probability is increasing that those returns are coming, but we still don't know. If you look at 2008, when we went to cash, we sat in a money market account for six months. We just went to cash completely last week. So, we may be there a while, or we may have opportunities to develop here into the end of the year. I remember Christmas Eve of 2008, we got a buy signal and everybody thought we were crazy. We got a chunk of return, went back to a money market account in February. You know, the, then the, the whole market nearly collapsed and then all of a sudden it, it started taking off again. And, and as, as we know, the, that's when the upside really hit into income allocator and tactical bond. We don't know when that's coming. But you can lock some of that money and you just feel like you have to, that's fine. But you, again, you're guaranteeing those low rates. First of all, the Fed is gonna be increasing rates as, as we go forward. That means you're locking yourself in to rates that may be lower than even they are three months from now. So you gotta be careful with that. The other one, you know, seeking higher returns, again, might make sense if you look at Wall Street strategists, they are wildly bullish for 2016. I'm going to post an economic update hopefully in the next couple of days and we're going to look at some of those things and there is a chance the market can do really well. However, 
you have to consider just in any normal year, forget about the fundamentals. There's a chance that the S&P 500 could lose 35 to 40 percent. That's based on um, standard statistics. That's based on history. Any one year, you could lose 35 to 40 percent. And you have to ask yourself, are those returns worth it? We've been compounding at an 18 percent annualized return. We haven't had a bear market in going on six and a half, almost seven years now. The chances for a bear market are much higher now than they were five or six years ago. Again, let's not look at where we've been. Let's look at where we're going. So finally, let's just look at income allocator and tactical bond. Right now, they are essentially doing what option number one is by moving to the sidelines. The only difference is they're not locking in those returns. We're in some short-term bond funds that can make money, especially if the Fed starts um, raising interest rates. We could see those make a little bit more money. It's not going to be a lot, but it, the focus there is the return of capital, not the return on capital. Let's say the selling in high yield gets even worse. We're going to see a lot more carnage, not just in the bond market, but also the stock market. But we're already in that defensive position. So we've done number one for you as far as getting to the sidelines to stop the bleeding. Now we're looking at, rather than locking in that guaranteed return, now we're looking at possibly um, strong upside returns You know, coming out of it. The risk reward right now in high yield bonds is good. The more the spreads increase, the better the odds are that we can make some significant money. So to me, just from a, you know, I don't know each and every one of your financial situations. I know there's a reason you're in an income allocator and tactical bond. So obviously suitability wise, investment objective wise, something at some point lined up with that. So that becomes important. If, you know, you're questioning what you should do, I, I you know, talk to your advisor, get a hold of me via our website. Let's talk a little bit more about your individual financial situation. But in general, if you're already an income allocator and tactical bond, the upside is so much more than the downside right now. And that becomes really important. We're not in high yields. We're not at risk of, of writing it down and getting locked out um, at, at the present time, like some of these other mutual funds are. We're just sitting there waiting, waiting for that opportunity, waiting for the thing we've done for the last 23 years, which is take those easier trades, knowing we might miss it once in a while. And if we do miss it, quickly moving back to sidelines. It's mechanical, it's not subjective, it's not guessing. Again, let's forget where we've been, let's focus on where we're going. That becomes really important with, with all of our programs, but in particular, income allocator and, and tactical bond. You know, really now more than ever, our website's a great resource for up to the minute details on, on what's happening in the markets, inside our portfolios. I'll, you know, be there all the time um, in our blog and, and other so sources to just give you an update. It, it could be a volatile year. We're in, our, in new territory. Ben Bernanke never raised interest rates. Janet Yellen gets the difficult job of doing what Alan Greenspan was the last person to do, which is raising interest rates. It's a new era for the market, something most investors don't remember. We're seeing the tug of war that happens when they don't really know what to expect. So there's lots of ways you can get a hold of it. The, the, the best way is to register if you haven't done so already, whether you're a professional investor or an individual. The only contact information you know we'll request is your email. You'll get a, a confirmation email, so always check your spam folder from there. If you ever want more contact from us, it's up to you. We're, we're not going to spam you and, and, and keep contacting you for registering for our website. Come back in every day, check out my trader's blog. If you don't care to register, you can still check out our homepage, which often has the latest market updates. We try to post a weekly podcast right to that web page. Um, almost every week it's there. Um, we also will do a, a quarterly economic update. In fact, I'm, I'm just finishing up one now that will be posted in, in the coming days before the end of the year. Now, I, I know it's been a really tough time for the market, and it's been a tough time to be in any sort of active defensive strategy. And, and the trust you've placed in strategic equity is something we don't take lightly. It's, it's something, I mean, if the camera would zoom in, you know, I didn't used to have this many gray hairs, and I, I know I have six kids that could be a cause of it. Um, 
but it, it's something that when markets get like this, markets get difficult, we work even harder to make sure we're doing what we promised to do, which is use our mechanical systems that are based on statistics, historical data, and probabilities to try to provide you a long-term solution, a smooth road for, for lifelong investing. So thank you for joining us. Continue checking back to our website. Um, and, and just, if you have any questions, get a hold of us, get a hold of your financial advisor, and we're, we'll be sure to help you out.